it sounds, and we will make sure that there's a copy shared with everybody so that no one can this. Wow, we're to start. Um, last year, to our senior group, we thank you for leading us. An example of how to respond to adversity challenges. I've witnessed you join your pain, but honestly, this year, I, I don't have the words to summarize what you've experienced. So I prefer on this day to witness you celebrate your accomplishments and the memories that you've made. And I'm grateful for this last opportunity to thank you for your contributions. I get emotional thinking of how frustrated you were. Um, I've told some of you I've even struggled to look in your eyes some days, seeing what the group lost. But it was your response that was so mature and gritty, which continued to brighten my day and our staffs and our outlook into the future to have witnessed how you all responded. And your response is going to be our legacy. So we have incredible respect and admiration for the dignity and perseverance that you have displayed and your families have displayed. Even more powerful, I found, was your advocacy for yourself and for others and for what you deserved. And that passion inspired us all. So your class isn't going to be remembered for what you lost unless you guys let it be that way, and I know you haven't. Rather, the staff of O'Neill wants you to know that you're going to be defined by your classes, your accomplishments academically, on the stage, on the court, in the field, in the stands, and ultimately through your treatment of each other, your classmates, because those actions is where you display the kindness and the acceptance that become known for you, this group of 2021. I'm certainly, I've missed the daily connections with the characters from this group, I'm not going to lie. We have some quiet ones, we have some boisterous ones, but you made each day unique with your presence and your actions these last four years. If I were here longer, I'd certainly take a poke at a few of you. But it's that relationship piece, the Wakotawin, that we will remember and we want you to as well. So I'm sure we're all tired of terms like hybrid, cohort, vital oxide, contact tracing, I could go on and on. These terms conjure up an emotion for me and I'm sure for you. But with each term, I'm again reminded by the response from you. In reality, all of this, which may cause you have to miss out on things, has also provided those strange opportunities to grow. And you seize those. You built significant tools around resilience and grace. And you managed, again, like I said, to pivot on a moment's notice whenever we asked you to. Because of your accomplishments, you're going to assume a very special and deserved place in Titan history. I want you to know that. No other group has defined the true values of what it means to be a Titan like you. Whether you think it's cliche or not, you've navigated this year and will not, and will, it will make you a stronger person, granting you gifts, skill sets, and qualities that will provide success for you in the future, enabling you not just to impact your own life, but I know many of you are going to impact ours in the community. So I end by asking you to express your gratitude to all who have helped you get here. Please don't miss this opportunity to say thanks. I shorten this part. Thank God for a Catholic education. Thank your parents for their support and love and give them a massive hug today, many times. Thank your teachers for being there for four years. You know I love all those people and I appreciate their care for you, but you need to thank them as well. And most of all, thank your friends. You look around, you thank the people that have walked with you, because I still hang out with mine from 35 years ago. I end by boring Archbishop Don's message. I guess I said I end twice, I apologize. I end by boring uh, Archbishop Don's message from Friday night. He shared how the reading from Jeremiah contains God's message to us. He said, I know the plans I have for you, and it's to give you a future with hope. Well, as the Archbishop said right now, there's a tension between a future full of hope and brokenness of our world and its challenges. But I choose to be optimistic despite that tension because of the group seated in front of us today. You will build a world filled with hope and in your own way, just as you did this year. So I challenge you to do what Micah said, God asks of us, to act justly, to love mercifully and walk humbly with God in his journey. Because that's the message that was shared with me at my O'Neill graduation 35 years ago today. So on behalf of Mr. Wright, the entire O'Neill staff and Regina Catholic School Division, I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. In the past, we know will be many. I congratulate the class of 2021. We will miss you, and God bless. Thank you, Mr. Fuchs. I would like to invite Brooke Armstrong, this year's valedictorian, to the stage. 
The class valedictorian is a student with the highest combined grade 11 and 12 average. To the class of 2021, although we may miss Mr. Palmerine's card tricks, Ms. Baumgartner's delicious recipes, or Mr. Benjamin's witty puns, our class has left our mark on O'Neill. We are a collection of individuals who, despite challenges both in and out of school, and sometimes with each other, rose to the occasion to successfully make it here today. It is no secret that we missed events and opportunities due to the pandemic, but we have learned a hard lesson. When things do not go your way, you can either roll with it or sit back and complain. Being here today is a testament to how each of us have chosen to roll with the constant tests thrown at us and choose to succeed. Speaking of tests, our whole high school experience appears to have been one long strenuous exam that has prepared us for the most prominent one of all. Since an exam is supposed to test your learning on a specific subject, let's review what we've learned and how we passed this test. Starting in September of 2017, it was a cool fall morning, all of us hopeful to start our day, maybe worried about how to work a lock on our lockers, but nonetheless excited. This year was like the fill in the blank section of an exam. In grade nine, we were still a little naive, so most of our decisions were made for us. We just had to fill in the gaps by picking maybe one elective, and especially in those first few weeks, we used the word bank given to us by sticking to what we knew and who we knew. It may not have been our most challenging year, but we started to see what this whole high school thing was all about, or so we thought. Nonetheless, we gradually, gradually branched out later, and as we went along, the exam got more complicated. Next was grade 10, or the multiple choice section. Now with more options, we tend to make a few more mistakes. Like, remember when the power went out four times and when Ms. Gardner almost set the school on fire? We started to meet new people and try new things. Whether our trials led to success or error, we learned more about ourselves. From this section, we learned how to bounced back from our mistakes, and we started to grow as more refined, mature young adults. While yes, this could be seen as our last full school year, as this was the last time our final months were filled with activities and championships, the test was only half over. Grade 11, I think you know where I'm going with this one. Football games, early morning choir and band practices, SRC activities and clubs filled the air. We started filling up, filling up our required classes so that we could make it here today, and we started to feel comfortable. I call this the short answer section. The answers are no longer in front of you as we now had more control over our lives. Then March 16th arrived. The world shut down in an instant, and like any exam, there's usually one short answer question that you have no idea what to say. But you have the choice. Answer it to the best of your ability, or skip it. Likewise, we were given the option of supplementary learning where we could continue to learn or move on. We saw our comfort switch to confusion in a matter of days, showing us that life will throw wrenches in your plans in the blink of an eye. It was a challenging time for everyone, but we all had to face reality and grow up, which came in handy in the next section. Although last year was unforgettable, we are more than the challenges we face. There comes a time on the exam when you have to apply what you have learned. Yes, I mean the long answer question. No answer key for this one, which was fitting for this year since no one really knew what was going on. Grade 12 was nothing short of memorable, as we were thrown into a whole new block system, yet the changes definitely didn't stop there. In November, as cases continued to rise, we were sent into hybrid learning, where we were separated by last name for the rest of our final year together. Then we went online twice. Many of us were disappointed because we felt robbed of our final games, final laughs with all our friends in the commons area, and final memories that we planned to make. I know our senior year was not like High School Musical or really any high school movie ever created, but that's the key. We have learned through this exam that life is messy and does not always go according to plan but it is through these challenges that we grow into stronger people. The class of 2021 is resilient, brave, and mighty, as they have won despite opposition. Not only did we succeed with our peers, but we have made it with the support of our family and teachers. Our families have supported us through online classes, stayed up late nights trying to teach us math, and have watched us grow throughout our entire school career. Thank you to our parents and caregivers. We wouldn't be here without our first educators. Our teachers who have fostered our development and have shaped the minds of tomorrow, we thank you for your constant dedication and life lessons you taught besides the required curriculum. And to everyone else who has been a part of our class's journey, we thank you for everything. The class of 2021, a group of bubbly, outspoken, talented, creative, and intelligent young adults 
who despite the constant uphill battle of navigating the unprecedented events over the past year, have surpassed all expectations. Not only have we survived a pandemic, but we have done it with grace and resilience that will lead us on the road to success and happiness, regardless of where we go after today. Congratulations, class of 2021. We have passed a tough exam, but now the next one begins. I once heard that life is the biggest exam of all. Most people waste time looking at other people's papers until they realize each person has a different question. Today marks the start of the rest of your life. What is your final question and how are you going to answer it? I pray that you are all calm, confident, and clear thinking, as Ms. Hannes always said. Remember, eyes on your own paper and read carefully. Good luck, your time starts now. Thank you, Brooke. We will now be calling the graduates to come forward to receive their graduation certificates. Would Miss Jennifer Whitney please come to the podium for the reading of the names? Excellence Agun. Shalom Agun. Noma Ekpedai. Mary Antoinette Alcaba. Tony Anones, Rezel Aquino, Brooke Armstrong, Nicole Otus Christian Ayala Wanky, French Immersion Kyle I Uden Zoe Bot Caitlin Barnes Michaela Bendable Azaria Bernie Michael Bitts Alan Blish Katie Bohatch Bunnell Bancado
Jessica Bondock. Nicholas Barlotti. Alia Kabamalan. Trisha Kabug. Elaine Capitolo. Lee Castillo. Russell Sabello. Amalda Charles. Sam Chase. Nicholas Charcellini. McKenna Clark, French Immersion. Jaylene Club, French Immersion. Colleen Constantinopola. Zach Corshane. Cordell Crow. Keandre Cruz. Chow Dang. Mariana Datar. Justine David, French Immersion. Taylor Davidson, French Immersion. Noreen De Castro, Marta Denisova, Congratulations to the class of 2021.
The virtual exercises, which includes a full-length version of the graduation ceremony, including awards, will be released today at 5 o'clock for you to view at your leisure. In a moment, the graduates will exit the gym. I would ask that all guests remain seated until the graduates have exited. Upon leaving the gym, if you would like to take photos, there are photo stations set up in the old gym, by the library, and the commons area. You will have approximately 25 minutes to take photos before grads are called to the front step for the cap toss photo. After the cap toss, we would ask that all grads and their guests make their way to their cars as the next group will be arriving. Please remember to take all of your belongings with you as you exit the new gym as the doors will be locked as we begin setting up for the next ceremony. Graduates, please grab your items off the floor and rise. Let's give a huge round of applause to the Archbishop M.C. O'Neill Class of 2021. Oh, shoot. 